According to the plan, the new humanitarian corridor runs along the western coast of the Black Sea near Romania and Bulgaria. On August the 18th, a Hong Kong flagged ship using the Ukrainian Black Sea corridor passed through the Bosphorus. On August the 26th, the second ship from Odessa set off for Bulgaria. Some experts in shipping and insurance have expressed concern about the safety of such a route because of the threats of Moscow, which announced a blockade of the Black Sea. According to the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Dmitro Kuleba, Kyiv is also working on alternative food supply routes. He stated this during a meeting with the head of the Turkish diplomatic department. We are working on alternate routes and we have completed this task, but objectively speaking, the functioning of the Black Sea route is the optimal solution from all points of view. We will be able to significantly expand grain transportation along land corridors, but the blockade of the Black Sea must be ended. The resumption of the Black Sea Grain Initiative is a priority for Ankara, Turkish Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan said. Of course, we cannot tolerate the destruction of explosions of ports and vehicles. That is why we believe that Russia should be returned to the equation from the very beginning. We foresaw that we would face similar incidents in an alternative where the Russian Federation would not be included and warned other partners about this. Before Moscow with the debris from the grain agreement, Ukraine had exported a total of 39 million tons of grain. Western countries accused Russia of using food as a weapon. The Federation carried out several massive attacks on Ukrainian granaries and port infrastructure. The aggressive actions of the Kremlin have led to a sharp increase in world food prices and the statement that the Russian Federation is ready to export 50,000 tons of grain to developing countries to compensate for the loss of Ukrainian exports is nothing more than a Moscow's speculation. What Russia was proposing is was to get grain to a half dozen countries, about 50 southern tons. The Black Sea Grain Initiative delivered 20 million tons to lower and middle income countries. In other words, what the Russians were proposing in compensation for getting out of the agreement is a drop in the bucket of what countries were getting and what they need. Anthony Blinken, United States Secretary of State, in an interview with the international French radio RFI. According to Reuters, Kyiv's allies are considering the possibility of organizing the export of Ukrainian grain through the territorial waters of Ukraine and overland. We see there are viable roads through Ukraine's territorial waters and overland, and we are aiming over the next couple of months to return to exporting at kind of pre-war averages from Ukraine. James O'Brien, head of the U.S. State Department's Office of Sanctions Coordination, in an interview with Reuters. After Russia's withdrawal from the Black Sea Grain Initiative, Ukrainian experts switched to alternative routes through the Danube ports, roads and railways. So far, the key route passes through the Danube. Up to 60% of Ukrainian grain can pass through it. Then it is delivered to Africa, the Middle East and Turkey. But according to Deputy Head of the Administration of Seaports of Ukraine, Dmitry Barinov, the Danube port will not be able to completely replace transportation by sea due to shallower depth and insufficient infrastructure. Reported by Diana Kolasnik, Christina Dombrovska, UATV News.